harking back to what I was talking about earlier with the Mustang GTD, let's talk about road cars that look like race cars from the factory, but are road legal. And I'm saying this as a BMW fanboy, well, more so of classic BMWs and model ones. I'm not sure about the, the, the G chassis M cars. I'm not sure about that yet. But Porsche has come out with the 911 GT3 RS. We've all seen it by this point. It looks freaking amazing. It looks like a GT car. It looks like a GT3 car. It looks spectacular. Killer performance, which is obvious. You got that PDK seven speed dual clutch, the best in the business without a doubt. It's just the way it is. There's no arguing. And I would even say, and this will make some people heated in the comments, I'm sure. I'm sorry, but even though I'm a Lamborghini fan as well, it looks better than the Huracan STO, mainly because they found a way to stay within road roadworthy regulations by giving it that awesome race car wing slash spoiler i can't remember the difference and without having it hang over the rear bumper they've still made it look not too small and not disproportionate to the rest of the exterior whereas if you look at the sto and you look at the rear wing on the super trafail street car the wing looks a little too small it needs to be bigger it needs to hang over the back of the car it needs to be wider and all kinds of stuff but they can't do that legally they're not allowed to. If you were to put an actual Super Trofeo race car Gen 1 wing on the STO, I would probably take the STO. Um, but as it stands from the factory, the 911 GT3 RS just looks absolutely amazing. You've got to be, I don't know, on acid or something, or in the middle of getting a lobotomy to not realize how beautiful this car is. And there are not a lot of beautiful cars on the modern market today. And not to mention, if Porsche, on top of building cars like this, also manages to find a way to save the internal combustion engine with their e-fuel ventures, Porsche's gonna be king for a long time if they succeed at all of this stuff, on top of still making exemplary vehicles. It's just objective, that's just objectively how it is. If they're gonna succeed at all of these endeavors, granted the e-fuel one is probably a long-term investment that is not going to pay off anytime soon but i'm hoping it works out because otherwise <laughs> we're all gonna have to give up on the hobby if evs take over but moving on to the more kind of lower end spectrum however dealer markups are kind of making this a little pointless the new honda civic type r a car that a lot of people seem to really like it's got great performance it's got a manual which fantastic honda you got your head screwed on straight still so that's good um it sounds all right but you know these cars are meant to be modified cat back will fix that no problem just don't take it to california they'll can lynch you or something my main gripe with this car is is that it suffers from the same issue as the last generation of the subaru wrx and wrx sti from the front it looks really good it almost looks a little evo-esque but i'm willing to forgive that because the evo 10 looked really cool but the problem is the front of the car it's a lot less you know angular and aggressive like than the last generation because a lot of people criticized it for that for having all these fins and diffusers and aerodynamic bits on it fine whatever they dialed it back a bit it's the front end still looks amazing i actually really like it but then when you look at the back you just go it looks like a melted candle to me it looks too curvy too bubbly and i just some people like that but for me it looks like the ass end of a corgi and i'm just i'm just not in, in into that crap it just looks weird to me a wing can't even save it for me i wish they had used the rear end of this civic instead and then also used the front end of the modern type r and then i think it would have looked awesome i probably would have bought one and that's saying something i don't like buying brand new cars it's freaking expensive but i like hondos and cars like this i like sporty sedans i like four cylinders i like turbo four cylinders i like turbo hondas but they just missed it for me and plus, I'm not a huge fan of front-wheel drive cars anyways, but if they'd made it look as amazing as I would could, you know, picture it being in my head if they had just fixed the rear end, yeah, I would have been into it. However, I don't know if my local Honda dealership would have marked me up or not on it. My Toyota dealership doesn't mark me up on stuff. My Ford dealership doesn't mark me up on stuff. They just sold a nice red S650 at my Ford dealership. No markup, sold it at sticker price. It was there for like a day. And then it sold. And then I saw it driving around earlier today, uh, which was really cool. And my Toyota dealership, they haven't been marking people up on GR cars or anything like that. They sell things at sticker price. 
and the sales managers have all basically told me almost word for word we don't do that scummy we like to engage in honest practices we would like to stop giving people reasons to see car dealerships go away and give them a good customer experience. And they always do, so I always recommend them to people. Here's a neat new car, the Toyota Century, which as far as I understand it is a badge that has been used in the past, but the US is now gonna get the Century. And it's basically an SUV with a 3.5 liter V6 out of a Lexus TX550. It's a plug-in hybrid and it's basically a bargain budget version of a Rolls Royce. It's meant to be a luxury car. And my wife Heather doesn't like the way it looks very much. She'd rather have a 4Runner TRD. But I think it looks really cool. Like, I would want one optioned out where it's all black, have some gold trim, Lexus style, put a bull bar on the front, and have that be my kind of murdered out, I don't know, feeling bad ass cruising, comfortable luxury mobile. But I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. It's like $170,000 though, US. So it's not cheap. It's pretty expensive for a Toyota. It might be their most expensive car. It's more expensive than the Supra. I think it's an interesting decision for them to bring this to, you, to the US because they discontinued the Avalon, I think. And that was supposed to be their kind of sporty luxury sedan. And it was a very handsome looking car, but I guess they weren't selling enough. So I'm wondering why they think they're going to be able to sell the Century. They must have already kind of done some research, maybe, to get some data on whether there's any kind of interest or demand for it. Um, because I feel like a lot of people that are in the market for cars like Rolls Royces and Bentleys and things like that are more likely to already have money for that stuff anyways. So why would you want to spend $170,000 on a Toyota SUV? Granted, it, since it's a Toyota, it might hold its value a lot better than a Rolls Royce or a Bentley. So... That might be an upside, I don't know. Now here's another car that I've got a lot of strong opinions about. The Lamborghini Revuelto, AKA the Scrambled Egg, which is actually named after like a, a bullfighter or something, kind of like the Aventador. Um, it's the Aventador successor. Naturally aspirated V12 hybrid. Obviously it's gonna be very, very fast. It's dual clutch now. It looks very cool from the front and it looks stupid in the back. I don't know how it's possible for people to like the way this car looks. I think it, the placement of the exhaust is my biggest gripe with it. If the exhaust was in the diffuser at the very bottom, akin to an Aventador SV or something like that, I think it would look so much better. Because from the front, I really like the design language they've got with the uh, the daytime running lights and all that good stuff, and, and having all the Y shapes everywhere. I think it looks really nice. It's a, It looks like a huge car. It looks like it's a lot bigger than the Aventador. And it's cool that it finally has a dual clutch now. And having the uh, the engine reorientated, rotated uh, in the engine bay is also really cool. I think that's really neat. I think there's they've done a lot of awesome work on this car. I just think from the back it doesn't look very good. Um, however, you know, if I were to buy one, I, if I'm fortunate enough to be in the market, I'm more of an Aventador guy myself though. So I'd probably buy that if I actually had the money. You could always take the rear bumper off, 2018 YouTuber style, do a bumper delete, do a, a, a mounted wing, and try and emulate the look of the rear end of the Lamborghini SCV12. I think that could be possible. It would still be on the street, it would look mean. You wouldn't really need to tune it. You could put a cat back on it if it's not already loud enough. A lot of Lamborghinis from the factory have been plenty loud as it is already stock like the Perfor Performante, the STO, the SVJ, they all sound great stock. So you really don't need to modify them, but you can, obviously. Well, unless, unless if you're in California, but I'm hoping you guys aren't that sadistic on yourselves. I don't know, the rest of the car looks extremely awesome, but I'm still more of an Aventador SV guy myself, especially if I can get one in Blue Lyle. But I think there's only one and it's a Roadster, and I'm not a big Roadster guy. But that also brings us to the uh, the Huracan replacement. No idea what it's called. All I know is it's got the same design language in the back with the pig nose end with the exhaust at the top. I don't know. I don't like it. But you got to say goodbye to the 5.2 liter naturally aspirated V10. It's gone. It's extinct. They are replacing it with a twin turbo V8. I think it's also going to be a hybrid. It's going to be fast. And at least we're still getting twin turbo V8s on the market somehow because, I don't know, 
they, the McLaren decided to sacrifice their balls, and now they only sell twin turbo V6s. And I think Ferrari's doing the same thing, and I just... Ugh. I, I just have zero interest in... If I'm in the market for a Ferrari or a McLaren, I want their twin turbo V8s. Or their naturally aspirated V8s. But, I don't know. It's stupid. But... Lamborghini is still making cool stuff. So right now, they're making the coolest stuff. Naturally aspirated V12s in the Revuelto. It is naturally aspirated. It doesn't have forced induction. For those of you that think a hybrid system is forced induction, get your head checked, get a CAT scan or an fMRI, because that's dysfunctional logic. And twin turbo V8, it's a lot better than electric vehicles, and it's a lot better than V6s. Because if you want a Lamborghini, you don't want a V6. That's silly. Why would you want that? Unless if you're getting an R35 GTR, which you could also argue argue is a supercar. Some people have. I'm still kind of on the fence about it myself. My only thing is with the Huracan before it dies, apparently the Technica is the final version of the Huracan, which is sad because I was really hoping they would make, even if it was like a limited production of 50 units in the world, like how they did with the Gallardo, where they make a Squadra Corsa version, where it inherits all kinds of race car stuff, straight onto the streetcar chassis, from the factory, ready to go. The ultimate version of the Huracan. And, because then they could have it be the Lamborghini Huracan Squadra Corsa Evo 2, or something like that. And use the Evo 2 front and rear end with the tail lights and headlights that are only available on the Evo 2 race car. Normal customers can't get those. But it's, they, they went, into all that effort to, de to design that stuff, but only put it on the race cars. Maybe they intended to put them on the road cars, but then maybe emissions regulations stopped it from being possible for them to make one more edition of the Huracan? I don't know. I don't know what went wrong, but it's a tragedy because it would have been really cool to have a Squadra Corsa Huracan just to say goodbye to the V10. Because when you think about it, it hasn't been around that long. Nowhere near as long as the Lamborghini V12. Granted, the Lamborghini V12 has had various iterations over the years, but the number of cylinders has stayed the same. I don't know, man. It's sad. I would have rather have gotten a hybrid naturally aspirated V10, maybe at a lower displacement, bring it down to four and a half liters or something. I don't know. Honestly, I would rather have the five-cylinder engine in the Huracan replacement, you know, the engine that's in the Audi RS3, and put that in the Huracan replacement, tune that up to 500, 600 horsepower, and kind of maintain that supercar sound that's still very kind of, you know, associated with the Huracan. And it's, I, I feel like that'd be a much better successor. But I get it, it's probably a lot easier to make a power out of a V8, but it's just not gonna be the same. I don't know. I still really like the RS3 though. I think it sounds really cool.